Hi everyone, I'm Karen from Prime Practice and we thought we'd just have a chat today about the importance of hand hygiene. Okay, so the commonly missed areas when we are doing hand washing or alcohol based hand rub, it's the same for both. Most commonly we miss actually our fingertips, uh, which is really important because that's what we're doing a lot of our touching with. Uh, we also commonly miss our interdigital spaces, so between our fingers, a back across the back of our fingertips and also around the heel of our hand or the, ba the base of the thumb area there. So most people's first instinct when they're doing hand hygiene is just to rub palm to palm, uh, but it's so much more important that we get everything when we are doing that hand hygiene. So ensuring good hand hygiene, particularly in the dental practice, is we need to remember that we are in a clinical environment. So we're putting a glove over it, so we need to look at products that work together, not against each other. We want to make sure that we are using moisturisers and products that don't have oil in them, because oil can break gloves down from the inside out. And we want to make sure that we are remembering our moments for hand hygiene um, throughout our procedures. So it's really, really important that we remember to perform hand hygiene with either alcohol-based hand rub or liquid soap and water every time we remove gloves and also prior to donning gloves because keep in mind that our gloves are just a barrier and they are porous to about three microns so they're not the be all and end all for protecting us or our patients. We want to make sure that we are doing our hand hygiene for the correct length of time. So for a full hand wash with soap and water that's 15 to 20 seconds the entire procedure took, should take 40 to 60 seconds, including patting dry. Our alcohol-based hand rub, we want to use that for 15 to 20 seconds, but then we obviously we eliminate the drying step because the alcohol evaporates as we use it. If you've got an injury on your hand and you still you obviously still need to perform hand hygiene in that clinical environment, we do want to make sure that it's covered because if we're using alcohol-based hand rub for our hand hygiene and we've got an open wound, that can cause quite a bit of pain. And with a dressing, we need to make sure it's waterproof so that we can perform hand hygiene still. I did have a, a client who is actually allergic to the adhesive on plasters and so she's tried very hard to find something that she can use. She's actually a farmer so she quite often has cuts and scratches on her hands from the weekend but then during the week needs to move into the clinical environment. So what she does is she actually uses, although we would not really advocate the use of double gloving, uh, she actually uses a glove as her band-aid for want of a, of a better term. And when she does her hand hygiene, she removes both gloves, performs hand hygiene with soap and water, does her pat dry, replaces a glove as her, her bandage and then places another glove as her barrier for her treatment. Uh, but if you can wear band-aids or any sort of um, dressing, then it should be a waterproof barrier. Resources that are available. Uh, so there's a lot of resources available for hand hygiene. This is a really uh, something that's focused on quite a lot globally with the WHO. Uh, and also in Australia and New Zealand, we have dedicated hand hygiene websites that have some great resources for uh, reminding people how to perform a correct hand wash and hand rub. And also just reminder posts, things that uh, like barriers, uh, so gloves aren't an alternative to hand washing, you can get posters that say that. But the visual indica uh, indicators and the visual reminders of how to hand wash and how to hand rub are great, not only for staff members but also for people entering the practice. So even workers like technicians and things, it's a good idea to remind them of how important it is to have proper hand hygiene performed. They're coming in and they're dealing with mucky equipment and they're then touching things within your practice. So we want to make sure that we have visual reminders for them to perform hand hygiene as well. There has been research that's shown that visual reminders actually improve hand hygiene outcomes. So it's a really good idea just to have some posters around the place. Uh, and you can find those at the dedicated hand hygiene websites in Australia and New Zealand. So some tips for hand hygiene, particularly in the dental practice environment, are we want to make sure that 
the basin we're using for our hand hygiene is separate from our instrument reprocessing. So we want to make sure we've got a dedicated uh, clean sink for that. Hand washing should be performed with running water, whereas our instrument reprocessing needs to be performed submerged in water. So make sure your hand washing facilities are separate from your instrument reprocessing area. We want to make sure when we're doing a full hand wash that we are patting dry when we're doing our, our drying off. So this is with a disposable paper towel. We don't want cotton towels being reused because they will harbour bacteria. So a pat dry because if we're wiping with a paper towel, we are damaging our skin doing that. And that's purely because of the frequency that we're performing hand hygiene in the dental environment. We want to make sure that the products that we're using are clinical grade and that they work together. So we should ideally have a liquid soap, an alcohol-based hand rub and a water-based emollient cream that all come from the same brand so that they don't cause any contact dermatitis. It's important that they are clinical grade, so that means they would either have TGA approval or they may have a CE mark on them. So those are some great things just to remember when you are performing and looking at what you're using to perform hand hygiene in the dental environment. Thanks for watching everyone and joining us while we talked about hand hygiene. Uh, up to 80% of common infections are actually spread by a hand, so it's really, really important that we get this basic stuff correct. Uh, so look out for our next video where we will hopefully be talking about something else useful around PPE and keeping ourselves safe in the dental environment. In the meantime, wash your hands.